my dear friends are you ready for the second test we are in the first day but we are in the second test as we know in the first test joseph failed there was pride in his heart and we know pride is the open door for devil to enter and therefore it leads him to the second test it is called pit test test of suffering we can even call test of complete abandonment and for this we would read the passage genesis chapter 37 we are the same chapter from verses 13 then from 18 to 22 we will read and israel said to joseph your brothers are pasturing the flock at shechem come i will send you to them joseph replied here i am from 18 onwards they saw him at a distance and before he reached them they plotted to kill him they said to one another here comes the dreamer now is the time let us kill him and throw him into a well we shall say a wild animal devoured him then we shall see what comes of his dreams but ruben heard this and tried to save him from their hands saying shed no blood throw him in this well in the wilderness but do him no violence this he said intending to save him from them and take him back to his father and this is the passage which clearly shows that joseph is thrown into the pit thrown into the well and this is the second test test to the pit it is suffering test and one thing if you really notice here that the brothers notice joseph when he is far from them how do they notice can you guess because he has a special gown that is wearing which was a gift from his father that special tunic clearly shows that it is joseph and he is so prideful and he is showing his special dress and it adds more envy and jealousy to his brothers and slowly we see that he is thrown into the well now why this test this test of complete abandonment can you imagine the situation that his own brothers are plotting to kill him that much of anger they have towards him and god the father to saint catherine of siena in the book titled dialogue he says there is nothing in this world that can purify the soul as much the suffering does there is nothing in this world that can purify the soul as much the suffering does and that is the reason the suffering can purify the soul and here the pride has to be purified and in this test i want you to remember three points again the first point the position of the pit you know in this position when he is thrown into the well joseph looks up and this position is the wonderful position for us to look towards god and then see what caused me to fall into the pit and many times we don't realize it is the pride that we have has caused the devil to enter into our life and that has caused for us to go into this suffering if he had no pride in his heart the devil would not have had this open door and therefore the first position makes us to realize our own reason for the fall and even in the story of prodigal son where jesus says the parable of prodigal son we see in in the gospel of luke we read very interesting you see chapter 15 verse 17 17 to 19 we read like this finally coming to his senses he said how many of my fathers hired men have food to spare 
and here I am starving to death. See, this he realizes himself that what caused him. So that kind of realization takes place in this position. And the second point we can remember in this pit test is the perspective of the pit. And what perspective is that in the perspective there are two persons speaking. God speaks to us at the same time the devil is also speaking to us. And the problem is we often tend to hear the voice of the devil. And the devil says God does not love you, God hates you, that is why you are suffering so much. On the other hand, the truth is God loves us so much. Love of God is for sure. The gift that Joseph had, the gown that he was given with was from his father. But he lost it. God did not take it back. Father did not take it back. But he lost it because of his pride. Now, this perspective makes us realize that it is God whose love is real. And we read in the John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 16, God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that all who believe in him may not perish, but will have eternal life. And therefore, his love is for sure. But then the devil is telling that God does not love you. And he thinks that all the problem is caused by his own brothers. He thinks the enmity is with his brothers. And the problem is also occurring in our life too. When there is a problem between husband and wife, they think it is the husband is creating the problem. The wife is creating the problem. The children are creating the problem. Why? The problem is with us. If we remove this first open door, then the devil has no loophole and then we can easily overcome. So the, the perspective of the pit clearly gives us that we need to realize the love of God and overcome this temptation of listening to the devil, looking at our own brothers and sisters as the enemy. Stop doing that and look towards God. So this is the second perspective of the pit. And the third point this pit test reminds us is the purpose of the pit is to cry towards God. My dear friends, in the fall we see perhaps Joseph would have cried towards the brothers. He would have blamed them. But then at one moment when he realizes that there is no point in blaming them, now he needs help, he would have prayed to God. Because I see this when the prodigal son is going. At that point, we see in the Gospel of Luke 15, from 18 onwards, I will get up and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me then as one of your hired servants. So he got up and set off his father's house. You see, what a humility. He has overcome the pride, the prodigal son. The same would have happened to Joseph's fall also. At that point, he would have blamed, but then later he pleads. And we see at the end of the story of Joseph, we see how he was pleading. Because we see when they say later, when Joseph has already become the governor of Egypt, at that point, the brothers talk among themselves, didn't he plead to us? And that is what shows that he might have pleaded and then he would have pleaded to God. The moment he pleaded, you see, the, the voice is heard and God answers through Judah. Judah, in the verse 26 we read, Judah then said to his brothers, What do we gain by killing our brother and hiding his blood. Come, we will sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. For he is our brother and our own flesh. His brothers agreed to this. 
Yes, my dear friends, the moment that we realize our fault and stop blaming our brothers and sisters and cry to God, then God immediately, wherever we are, whatever position we are, He gives heed to our prayer. And then Judah gives a wonderful paving way for this suggestion. And then Joseph is sold to the Ishmaelites. Now, what is the purpose of this pit test? What is the purpose of this suffering test? And we see it is the test is to cry to God and to return to come back to the Father. That is the ultimate aim of this pit test. This test helps us to return back to the Father. We see Prophet Jonah, he is crying to God from the belly of the fish. And the prodigal son, he is crying to God from the test of suffering. He is crying to God and returns to the Father. So also here, he cries to God and then he is delivered. Now, my dear friends, I don't know what kind of test you are in. Maybe you were in pride test or you are in suffering test. But remember, if at all you are in the test of the pit, remember to cry to God. There is no point in blaming your spouse. There is no point in blaming your boss. There is no point in blaming your friends, your colleagues, your children, your parents. The point is look towards God, cry to God and return to Him. The, the moment that you turn to him, answer comes, my dear friends. And this is the purpose ultimately for us to enter into this pit test. So we overcome pride and if not, this pit test would surely help us to overcome the pride. And therefore, let us turn to God. Let us cry to him, Abba Father, I thank you. I praise you for having made me realize that I need you. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen.